when you talk about that die off and somebody had asked a question earlier too, so I'll go into that. But when you talk about that 90% die off, there's going to be a whole lot of homes that, you know, nobody's going to give a crap if you, if you squat there or not. So, um, there's going to be a whole lot of that, but somebody asked earlier, he said in about three to six months, what do you think, uh, just your opinion, the, the percentage of people that would be, you know, part of that die off at that point? Cause I think, Within a year, it'd be that 90% number. But three to six months, there's a lot that starts to happen there. You're talking about starvation and, and all that stuff that goes on there. At, at, yeah, at three months, you're going to have um, the first die-off within that first nine days is going to be anybody on any kind of uh, medication that sustains their life. So diabetics, yeah. transplant recipients, uh, dialysis patients, that kind of thing. Within nine days, they're all gone. Um, the average person can go austere conditions, eating very little, and still survive. Um, so you, there'll be some star, starvation cases in that time frame. And in a lot of cases, it'll be parents that will starve to death, leaving children behind because um, no parent's going to eat food when they have a hungry child. They're going to always give it to their kids, foregoing for themselves, not thinking that they're going to grow weaker and less able to take care of the kids and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. In six months, you'll see within that, that three to six month period, you'll see a substantial starvation die off. Um, there'll be a huge um, die off for starvation. At the same time, though, the other side of the coin is you're going to have a big segment of society going down and you're going to have another segment of society that's going up. The predators um, at six months, the people that are still very fit, um, well fed and, and able are going to be some extremely dangerous people. Um, they're going to have yeah. honed and perfected their skills by that point, um, and there'll be some some serious, da- seriously dangerous hombres running around, and that'll be a, a dangerous time. Now, they'll have been thinned a little bit, but the ones that are still kicking at six months are going to be some extremely proficiently dangerous folks. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. That's something we don't really think about. You just think about how all the, the death and destruction and this and that. But, yeah, there's going to be people that – are, are going to be going, sweet, about time. I've been waiting for this. That's, you There's, know, banding together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it's not like, in, in some cases, they will just be naturally horrible people. In some cases, it's going to be groups are going to band together and do this, not because they're just overtly mean, awful people, but they just, they, like I said, they want to feed their kids. They, they want to stay alive. And if preying on other people is what they have to do, that's just what they're going to do. You know, once yeah, all the stores are looted out and all the easy pickings are gone, they're going to start looking for other targets. Yeah, we're, we're kind of getting into like the walking dead type thing here, but it's it's really true. There's people that are rocking a hard place. Either I go join this group, even though I know they're bad, or I starve to death. You know, what do you do? Yeah. That's, that's one of those dilemmas you, you put yourself into and you don't prepare, yeah. And people, and people you know, a lot of folks think they have some really solid morals, and you'll hear the "I'll never." I never say "I'll never" because I just don't know. I, I've never been in that position, yeah. and I don't know what I'll do. Um, but you know, if if a group surrounded your house and they gave you the option to either come out and possibly join them and surrender whatever stuff you had to the collective, or we're just going to burn your house down, what are you going to do? You know, Selko. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He, he's yeah survived the Bosnian war and, and he I've talked to him a lot. He's a great guy. And he says, a lot of Americans are delusional about what they think. You know, it's not going to be the way you think, you know, you think you're going to defend your home and, and no one's going to get you. And he goes, they'll just burn it down or drive a tank up to it and fire a tank around through it. You know, I mean, cause there'll be a lot of mine, but neither can you too. Yeah. But, yeah. But again, that's that risk versus reward thing. If, if the cost is too high, and they can tell that because they're not just going to roll up and hit you. They're going to conduct surveillance. They're probably going to spend days watching you, learning your patterns, seeing what you do, get an idea for where you're keeping things, how many people are on your site. And if they determine that the risk is not worth the reward, they're going to move past you. So in the initial phases, you may not want to have a very overt tactical uh, situation. But as time progresses, you're going to want to be able to project force. You know, you're going to want to make people look and say, whoa, hey, um, maybe this isn't such a good idea. That's why you need to be conducting patrols around your property. 
you know, consider what your AO is, develop your three reins of defense, because, you know, if you're not putting boots on it, you don't own it. And by conducting patrols, you'll be able to either A, bump into their observation, their surveillance forces, or B, just tell that people are in the area. Right. That gives you a warning. Now you can prepare. Um, and you may be able to conduct the fight on your terms instead of their terms. So, like I said, this kind of stuff scares a lot of people off, but it's just reality. Mm -hmm. You go to a lot of countries, this is how you live. This is just daily life. Um, we're easy. We have an easy life here. It, this kind of thing hasn't mm -hmm. happened here in a very, very, actually ever since Civil War, uh, frontier days, those kind of things. But um, it will happen again. And, you know, some people don't want to think about the unpleasant stuff. And uh, they'll have a very short something ever happens. So. Yeah, and I think you said you yeah, know, we were talking about the morality earlier. Is you can you can be very moral and righteous and say, "Hey, I'm not going to do that." But over time, as people do things to you, they come up and they try to steal your food or they try to, you know, you're the tar their target. Eventually, it's going to turn you into a more hardened personality where you're like, "Look, if I don't get them, they're going to get me," because that's just the reality of what happens. I mean, you know, I worked a lot of years overseas, and you see that and Iraq. I mean, when you think about people in Iraq, all during the war, whether it was from the Americans or the insurgents, you had people that had to go about their daily lives, and there were people trying to kill them. Those are some hard people now because they learned how to survive in that, and their moral base on a lot of people shifted because of the uh, environment they were in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Selko did an interview with uh, Jack Spearco, and this was like three, four, five years ago. But it was a really good interview because he explained just what it was like to live through the Bosnian stuff, you know, yeah. bartering supplies. We try to think about all these different bartering supplies and all that. And he was talking about how it's the little stuff, lighters, batteries, stuff like that. You know, yeah. it's it's all basic stuff. You know, the the stuff that we fantasize about here and there. It, it was just a really cool interview to listen to him explain exactly how it was out uh, if you can, I'm I'm sure if you put Selco and Jack Spearco into Google, that'll come up. But it, it was it was quite a while ago. But the audio sucked. But I'd listen to the whole damn thing because it was just so interesting. Yeah, I, I, I listened I listened to that too. And and talking to him, he tells a story about bartering. And and there's a there's a guy that was like everybody's afraid of this guy, but he could get about anything. Um, he was very violent and and that sort of thing. But he was killed by a very small girl during a barter exchange when she stabbed him to death. <laughs> He's like, so you never know who is going to be dangerous, you know. And and going back to the moral let thing. let guard down. Yeah, you know, or overconfidence, too. It was a prime yeah. example of overconfidence. Um, and there's a lot of people, that I believe, that are, that are way, way overconfident. Um, but going back to the moral thing, if your neighbor Joe, you know, the shit's hit the fan. Times are tough. Um, you've run completely out of food, but every evening your neighbor Joe is out there grilling something, and his kids are playing in the yard and laughing and giggling, and yours are laying there, you know, listless, barely able to move because they're hungry, and then you know they're starting to suffer from malnutrition. Their bellies are starting to bloat. You and Joe may have been very good friends in the before, but as you see this every day, your mind's going to shift and you're going to start seeing all kinds of reasons to hate Joe. Um, and Joe's sudden, you know, in very short order, going to become a real asshole. And somebody needs to do something about Joe. And it's just going to happen to you. You, may, you. you know, you're not going to sit and watch somebody else do fine while you're suffering to that degree. You're, you're going to sit and watch your kids die and still go over and talk to Joe in the afternoons and have, you know, a conversation with him while his kids play in the yard, you know, and he's not helping you, you know. Um, it, it'll it'll bring out the worst in people. That's why I say people are base animals, and you know we're no better than than any other creature on the face of the earth. We want to survive, and we will fight to do so when resources are limited. And, I and think, we fight resources now, you know, and they're not limited. And I think you brought up a good point in that in one of your books, where when Morgan got back home, the locals were, you know, they ended up having an issue. I think it was. One woman and her family and all that wanted his food. Like, well, everybody should share in your food, you know. And it, now it gets to that point where, like, what are you going to do? Well, you know, I joke that, that during times of crisis, um, people very quickly become good little socialists. Um, <laughs> as long as I have my stuff, I'm good, and this is my stuff. But as soon as my stuff runs out, 
hey, we need to share your stuff. You know, I'm, I'm out of stuff. You still have stuff. We need to share that. It's only right. And that's what this, it's only right. You, you're going to let me starve to death. You know, you can't let me starve to death. Well, that's, it's not my problem. If you starve to death. the same opportunities in life that I had, you could have been preparing. You could have been doing things. Calls for people to make. But, you know, if you start sharing with one neighbor and then the other neighbor runs out of food, now he expects you to share with him because you're already sharing with that guy. And then the guy across the street does it. You know, um, you may have saved a year's worth of food for a family of four, but what's going to happen when you have, you know, 27 people all eating out of your larder? It's just not going to last long. Um, mm-hmm. And that whole, we'll put everything in a pile and we'll share it evenly. Uh, we've seen the results of socialism around the world. It never works out. Um, somebody will climb to the top of that heap and dictate who gets what. Um, and so I'll never dive into one of those. I'm saying never for that because that's one thing I will not do. Hell, I won't live in a neighborhood with an HOA, so I'm not about to <laughs> get, into, get into sharing out everything. 